Okay, all uh, praises to the Most High. Well, today's class, unfortunately, because Cap is sick, today's class will be titled The Spirit of Jealousy and Competition. Today's class is titled The Spirit of Jealousy and Competition. This is something that plagues the brothers and sisters in Israel. And we gotta we gotta get rid of that spirit. We gotta identify the spirit in order to get rid of it. All right. So we're gonna go over it today. So give me the definition of jealousy. Similar. No, look up the definition of jealous. I'm sorry. Jealous. Just jealous. Jealous. Feeling or showing envy for someone of their achievements and advantages. So when you're jealous of somebody, you feel some type of way. The type of way is envy. You feel envy because of their achievements and advantages that they have. Look up envy. Because when you're jealous, you're feeling or showing envy. Envy. A feeling of discontented or resentful longing aroused by someone else's possessions, qualities, or luck. Read it again. A feeling of discontented. So when you discontented, what does that mean? It means you're not satisfied with your talent, what you possess. Whatever it is that's in that next person that you don't have, them having it makes you have a feeling of discontentment. Right. Read or resentful. or resentful longing aroused by someone else's possessions, qualities, or luck. So this spirit is aroused or sparked by so you might not know you have that spirit inside of you until that brother, that certain brother or that certain sister get that blessing. You know what I'm saying? Something good happened to them. And you never knew you had that spirit until that happened. That's how it works. That's how that stuff spring up. All right, from there, give me Ecclesiastes 4, verse 4. The Bible talks about this. So we're going to talk about it. I had a, one, of, uh, one of the wise leaders in Israel told me, well, he told all of us, you know what I'm saying, but he told me personally, you know what I'm saying, when he came down here, he said, look, y'all got to beware of the spirit of envy. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why is because we're a young camp. You know what I'm saying? For some reason, young people love to compete, try to outdo one another and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So we said that's the spirit that we got to look out for. So we're going to address that spirit today. Read what you got. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4 and verse 4. Again, I considered all travail uh -huh. and every right work. And what? And every right work. And every right work. Every good work. Read. For this a man is envy and of... That and that for this, for every right work, read, a man is envied of his neighbor. That's why people get envied. That's why people get, people become envious of people because of somebody right work. Somebody doing a good thing and then make the next person envious. That's crazy. It's weird. You know what I'm saying? That you doing good can make an evil spirit come on somebody else. That's why I keep reading. This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. It's vanity, meaning it's nonsense, and it's a vexation of spirit. Like, why? what's wrong with you? He ain't doing nothing but what he's supposed to do, and it's making you envious. It's a vexation of spirit, but it is what it is. It happens very often. Go to Genesis 4. Since the beginning of time, this spirit has been around, and it never left. Genesis 4, verse 3. The book of Genesis, chapter 4, and verse 3. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. Right, the so somebody tell me why, how come, you know what I'm saying, Cain offerings of fruit, you know what I'm saying, wasn't uh, satisfying to the most high? Somebody tell me why. 
Soldier, are you? Right, so what scriptures, what precepts show us the sacrifices that the Most High want? It's a precept. All right, go to Deuteronomy 12 and 6 real quick. We're going to jump back. Because we got to understand that Cain knew not to bring no fruits and veggies, crops, whatever, to sacrifice to the Most High. The Most High dealt with flesh. All right, read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 12, and verse 6. Mm -hmm. And thither ye shall, be, shall bring your burnt offerings and your sacrifices and your tithes and have offerings of your hand mm -hmm. and your vows and your freewill offerings uh -huh. and the firstlings of your herds and of your flocks. The firstlings of your herds and your flocks going into what? Your cattle, all right? Your livestock. That's your freewill offerings to the Most High. That's what you bring to burn before him for a sweet savor. Everybody understand that? So go back to Genesis 4. The book of Genesis, chapter 4, and verse 4. Uh -huh. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock. So Abel was keeping the commandments. He was applying the scriptures, right? He was doing what he's supposed to do, a right work. Read. Read. And of the fat thereof, uh -huh. and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. It said the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offering. Read on. But unto Cain. But unto Cain. And to his offering he had not respect. God did not respect bringing fruits to him for a sacrifice. What would what, what even happen if you burn a fruit? Like, what the hell? That only makes sense, do it. You know what I'm saying? So... Cain, his, his offering did not get any respect from the Most High. Read on. And Cain was very wroth. And, and Cain was what? Very wroth. And his countenance fell. So why in the hell is he mad <laughs> when he the one you... If anybody should be mad, it's the Most High. Because he deal with the firstness of your flock, not crop. But he mad. He saw the Most High was displeased and he got mad. That's the spirit that some brothers have when they get corrected. How you, you the one that did the error to get corrected with the correction coming. You mad? That makes no sense. But that spirit always been around. Read on. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? Mm -hmm. And why is thy countenance fallen? Why you mad? Read. If thou do well, shalt thou not be accepted? If you do, if you keep the commandments... You do what you're supposed to do. You're going to be all right, right? What's the problem? You knew what you were supposed to do and you didn't do it. So why are you mad for him? Read. And if thou doest not well, uh -huh. sin lieth at the door. But if you don't do well, sin lies at the door. If you let that spirit remain in you, it's going to take over you and consume you. Read. And unto thee shall be his desire, uh -huh. and thou shalt rule over him. Come on. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. And Cain what? Talked with Abel his brother. So after the fact, after the Most High had respect to Abel and his offering, and he didn't have respect to Cain offering, Cain said, hey, bro, let me holler at you. Read on. And it came to pass. Uh -huh. When they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. Right. So what, what did Abel do to Cain? Nothing. Abel never did nothing to Cain. Abel kept the commandments. And he got, you know what I'm saying, notoriety from the Most High. He got notoriety from the Most High, and that made Cain angry to the point where he killed his brother. Read on. And the Lord said unto Cain. Oh, that's it, that's it. Go to Hebrews 11 and 4. Hebrews 11 and 4. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11 and verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice a than what? Cain. A more excellent sacrifice than Cain. He offered a better sacrifice than Cain. It was better. Not because he was trying to outdo Cain. He just doing what he supposed to do. A right work. His, excellent, his sacrifice was more excellent than Cain's, read. Right? By which he obtained witness that he was righteous, uh -huh. God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. Right, so remember, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice, the firstlings of his flock. Now go to 1 John 3 and 11. 
the book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 11. Uh -huh. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning. Since Genesis. Read. That we should love one another. That we should what? Love one another. Love one another. So, one of the synonyms for envy is hatred. All right? One of the synonyms for envy is hatred. That's why a lot of times you'll read in the Bible, which we're going to read, that it'll say in one section, it'll say they envied him. Then later on, it'll say they hated him because it means the same thing. It means the same thing as hatred. So we heard from the beginning that we should love one another. Verse 12. Not as, <clears throat> not as Cain, uh -huh. who was of the wicked one. So we're not supposed to be like Cain, who was of the devil. Read. And slew his brother. And what? And slew his brother. Uh -huh. And wherefore slew him? slew he him. It said, and what, wherefore slew he him? Why he slay him? Why did Cain kill his brother? Why did he do that? Read on. Because his own works were evil. Because what? His own works were evil. Because his works was evil. It was not what the Most High commanded him to do. It was against the commandments, against the expectations of the Lord. His own works was evil, read. And his brother's righteous. But his brother's was righteous. That's why he killed his brother. Not because his brother offended him. Not because his brother was out of order and did anything worthy of death. He killed his brother because his brother did right in the eyes of the Lord and he didn't. And he had that spirit of envy and it consumed him to kill his brother. So if you got that spirit in you, what are you? A murderer. A murderer. So now give me the article. Give me the article. The five signs. All right, so we're going to deal with the five signs you are jealous of your friend. This is for the brothers and the sisters, all right? This is how y'all going to be able to tell if that spirit on you or not, all right? Let's deal with number one. You can read it, uh, Isha. Number one, you are not happy. Well, at start at the yeah, start yeah. No oh, one likes. No one likes to admit that they are jealous, especially when it comes to our friends. We're supposed to be happy for them when things are good, right? Right. So ain't nobody gonna sit up there and admit that they battling with their spirit of envy and jealousy. But a lot of them gonna force a fake smile when they're around you, cause they know it's on them. But they're going to try to convince themselves that that's not how they feel. Read on. But sometimes those negative feelings of jealousy get the best of us. Mm. Before you ruin over your friendship, over it, identify why you're jealous, and this will help you move past it. Right. That's why I said we got we to gotta be able to identify the spirit first in order to fix it. So you got to know when you're jealous so you can move past it so we can grow as a nation. Because if we got a congregation full of murderers, you know what I'm saying, we ain't going to grow, we ain't going to prosper. Right. Keep reading. These five signs can help you identify feelings of jealousy mm. early on so you can do something about them. Read. You're not happy at their good news. So this is sign number one. This is a sign that you're jealous. Your, your friend gets some good news, and for some reason you're not happy about it. Scroll up. When a friend finally accomplishes a goal or experiences something great in their life, uh -huh. you should feel happy for them you as what? their friend. You should you feel happy should for them. You should feel happy for them. Keyword. Should. You should feel happy for them, Reed. As their friend. Uh -huh. If you don't, you need to ask yourself why. That's what a lot of people don't do. They don't examine themselves and ask themselves why. Why do I, am I kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Why I'm feeling like that shouldn't have happened to him. When that's my friend, that's my brother. He got a blessing. He did something good. Why am I not happy? You know what I'm saying? Why am I feeling resentful for some reason? You should ask yourself why, Reed. Very often the hardest thing to deal with is timing. Uh -huh. When your friend gets something before you do. When your what? When your friend gets something before you do. Read. It's difficult to accept their good luck. It's what? It's difficult to accept their good luck. It's difficult to accept it. Because you think y'all was both supposed to receive it. Or you should have got it first. It's difficult to accept when you see your friend get something that you didn't get. 
the spirit can just jump on you. Read. When you're questioning your own fortune or ability to achieve a goal. Then it shows self-esteem. Like, damn, what did I, how did I not get that? How did he get it and I didn't? What did I do? Read. This realization can come out through in the form of jealousy. In the form of what? In the form of jealousy. In the form of jealousy. So we're going to deal with that. Give me Genesis 37 and verse 2. Not happy about your friend's good news. That's the first sign that you jealous, that you envious. The book of Genesis chapter 37 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. So Joseph, you know what I'm saying, the little brother, he always went back to daddy and told them what they was doing wrong. Now, is that, is that scriptural? Is that law? What law? Leviticus 5 and 1. Joseph was applying the scriptures, a right work, right? Right. Read on. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children mm -hmm. because he was the son of his old age, mm -hmm. and he made him a coat of many colors. Right. So for him doing a good work, his daddy gave him a coat of many colors. Would today be a designer jacket? Something nice, something that look good, maybe Louis, but which I like nowadays. Uh yeah, I don't know. But designer, something, it was nice. His daddy gave him something nice for applying the scriptures. Read on. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him and more. And when, when the brother saw that he got that reward for doing it, and his father had favoritism because he earned it, mm -hmm. read. Then all his brethren, they hated him. They what? They hated him. So they weren't happy at the good news. They hated him. They went like, man, they come for jail. They hated him. They hated him. They hated him, meaning they envied him. Read on. And could not speak peaceably unto him. And they could what? Could not speak peaceably they unto him. They couldn't hide their hatred either. I just, uh, they, it, would, they, it wasn't nothing good they could say to their brother. What, but what did he do to them, though? Nothing. Nothing. That's the first sign that you're jealous of somebody. From there, 1 Samuel 18, verse 6. You're not happy about their good news. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 6. And it came to pass, as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing, to meet King Saul with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. Mm -hmm. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slain his thousands. Right, so remember, you know what I'm saying? They congratulating both of them. You know what I'm saying? Both of them getting a congratulations. Both of them getting an applause. Both of them getting praise. So, look, you killed by the thousands. Woo! So, I killed by the thousands. Watch this, read. And David, his 10,000. Killed by the 10,000. Woo! See? You know what I'm saying? It feel good, but it's bittersweet. Like, damn. Like, yeah, I do kill. Yeah, I'm a killer, but... Damn, they think he's just better. You know what I'm saying? That's all he can think about. He not thinking about the props he getting, the honor and praise that he getting. All he thinking about is, damn, my brother better than me. They look at my brother like he better than me. Read on. And Saul was very wrong. And Saul was what? Very wrong. He was not happy about that good news. He was upset. He was mad. But what did David do to him? David was defending and killing for him. And he got mad. Read on. And the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousands. Mm -hmm. And to me they have ascribed but thousands. Let me, let, me, let, let me show you how it'll put you in a childish, foolish mindset of thinking. By them singing that song, watch how he felt. Read. And what can he have more but the kingdom? Yeah, he might as well have the kingdom. He might as well be the king. 
just cause this damn song. I'm telling you, man, this spirit, man, is destructive. Keep reading. Watch this. And saw I David. He what? He I David. He what? I David from that day and forward. Hey, give me that clip. Give me that clip. Well, meanwhile, little did we know this local big head nigga named Rico started feeling his pockets was getting a little thinner since we got there. Hey, ain't y'all good? So he was the one, you know what I'm saying, that had the block sold up. Then all of a sudden, his pockets start getting a little slimmer. Trouble was right there on that corner, staring right at us. Yeah, they, they rolling hard, too. They, they slanging real good, real good. Might have to drop them. Might have to drop a dime on them niggas. Now look, now pause. Y'all know what that mean? Right. That's how low your spirit will get. I'm going to snitch on him and get him thrown in jail for doing the same thing I'm doing. That's some crazy stuff. That's the spirit that'll jump on you. Keep. He don't like it. He don't like it. Now, the, the man ain't do nothing to him. He ain't come and shoot and take over his block or nothing. He was just doing his thing. Everybody said, look, I don't like that. I don't like that. All right, Sirach 14, verse 8. He eyed his brother. Y'all seen how he was looking at that man, right? That damn perm in his head. <laughs> the book of Sirach, chapter 14, and verse 8. Uh -huh. The envious man hath a wicked eye. Right, Saul, Rico. They, they was jealous. They became jealous of their brother, and they caused them to have a wicked eye. They eyed their brother out of envy. Read. He turneth away his face and despiseth men. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. Drop a dime on him. Read on. A covetous man's eye Watch this. is not satisfied with his portion. Now, he didn't sit up there and take over the block. He ain't had no more money. He, you know, his pocket just got a little bit slimmer. But when you got that spirit on you, you ain't sad. You still getting money. You still doing your thing in a corner sense, and then it's truth. You know what I'm saying? You still, you know what I'm saying, flourishing. You doing good works. But for some reason, your brother getting a little more notoriety, your sister getting a little more notoriety, a little more honor, and you not satisfied with what the Most High gave you. You ain't satisfied with the role, the position that the Most High put you in. That's a covetous, envious, jealous, hateful spirit. A covetous man is not satisfied with his portion, right? And the iniquity of the wicked dryeth up his soul. Eventually, the fruits, your works, the fruits of your spirit is going to dry up. And you're going to get to the point like Cain, Saul. You're going to want to kill your brother. You ain't going to stand and be around your brother. You're going to become a real murderer. That's why we got to identify the spirit and get it right and fix it. All right, from there. Genesis 29, verse 15. Now we're going to deal with the women real quick. Yeah, right. Genesis 29 and 15. The book of Genesis Chapter 29 and verse 15. And Laban said unto Jacob, uh -huh. Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught? Uh -huh. Tell me what shall thy wages be. Right, so when Jacob fled, you know what I'm saying, he went unto Laban the Syrian and served him. So Laban was like, hey, you know what I'm saying, you ain't finna just serve me for nothing. What you want? What, what reward do you want for the work you've done for me, right? And Laban had two daughters. Uh -huh. The name... Of the elder was Leah. Right, so the oldest daughter, and that was the custom. You're supposed to get the oldest daughter. So the eldest daughter was Leah, read. And the name of the younger was Rachel. And the younger sister was Rachel. Watch this, though. Read. Leah was tender eyed. Leah was tender eyed. What that mean, y'all? She was tender eyed. Zeke. She was all right. I guess. 
I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If somebody say you a tender-eyed sister, that is not a compliment. It say, <laughs> Leah was tender eye, read on, come on. <laughs> but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. You see that? They contrary one to the other. Beautiful and well-favored is the opposite of tender eye. <laughs> All right. Uh, line up on line. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, jump down to verse 30. Verse 30. And he went in also unto Rachel, uh -huh. and he loved also Rachel more than Leah. Right, so Jacob... Love Rachel more than Leah. He loved Rachel more than Leah. Even Leah was the one that he had to get first because she was the oldest. But he loved Rachel more than Leah. Why? Because Rachel was fine. Mm -hmm. Read. And served with him yet seven other years. To get Rachel, read. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated. Leah was what? Hated. Right. In the eyes of Jacob. Jacob didn't like her like that because she was tender eyed. She, was, she didn't arouse him like that. Read. He opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. But the Most High saw that he didn't like her, and he made her the only one able to get pregnant. Rachel, the fine one, he couldn't make no babies with her at first. So watch this, chapter 30 and verse 1. Chapter 30 and verse 1. Now remember, Rachel was already the youngest. You know what I'm saying? She wasn't even supposed to be able to get with him anyway. But not only did she get with him, he loved her. More than he loved Leah. You know what I'm saying? So she should feel good about that thing, right? But watch this. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, uh -huh. Rachel envied her sister. She did what? She envied her sister. She wasn't satisfied with her portion. She wasn't satisfied with the fact that you the favorite. He loved you. You the queen. But she started to envy her sister, read. And said unto Jacob... Give me children, or else I die. Right, so she tried to blame it on Jacob, like it was Jacob's fault. Give me children, or I'm going to die. That's how some brothers say. <laughs> That's how some brothers and sisters be, man. If I can't get what my brother get, I don't want nothing. If I can't get what my sister get, I'm straight. I don't want it. That's an evil spirit. That's the spirit of envy. Keep reading. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, uh -huh. and he said, Am I in God's stead? Who hath withheld from thee the fruit of thy womb? Right. It's, that ain't my fault. Yeah. Take that up with God. Yeah, I'm doing I'm, hey, the same way I'm doing right till you're getting the same outcome. All right? All right, from there, go to Sirach 25, verse 5. Sirach 25, verse 5. See, when it's envy going on with women, it's on a whole nother level. Sirach 25, verse 5. The book of Sirach, chapter 25, and verse 5. Uh -huh. Oh, how comely is the wisdom... 26 and 5, I'm sorry. 26 the book of Sirach, chapter 26, and verse 5. Mm -hmm. There be three things that mine heart feareth, uh -huh. and for the fourth I was sore afraid. Right, so these three things he finna name, you know what I'm saying? He's scared of that. He don't, he don't want that to happen. But that fourth, though, some serious. Read. The slander of a city. Right, people slandering the congregation, just like we've been seeing over these over this past year. You know what I'm saying? That's a treacherous thing, read. The gathering together of an unruly multitude. Same thing. The uh the defectors getting together, you know what I'm saying? Unruly. Ain't ain't no rank. No more rank. We don't believe in that. That's that's a treacherous thing to see. You ain't seeing nothing but the sheep being scattered. Read on. And a false accusation. And a false accusation. Same thing that been going on. All three of them, damn, they fall right in line with each other. The slander, gathering together the unruly, and a false accusation. Oh, they got, uh, <laughs> with the, uh, they got magic school buses, uh, Bishop going to Africa, to raping the little girls. All type of false accusations that they can, and they know they can't prove it. Uh, the Joy Morgan situation, this, hey, this stuff is, is terrible. Read on. All these are worse than death. All that is worse than death. But y'all ain't even heard the fourth one, though. Watch but, this. But a grief of heart and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman. Something worse than all of that. Is when a sister 
is jealous over another sister. There's some serious right there. They will really destroy a congregation. Because here, all them three things right there, they couldn't destroy us. You know what I'm saying? They couldn't stop nothing. But when a woman jealous over another woman, hey, I'm telling you, they say a foolish woman pluck it down with her hands by her actions. The, hell, the, the woman was the beginning of sin. She the reason why we in hell right now. So they, they let you know when y'all do stuff, it be on another level. So if you definitely, if y'all got that spirit on y'all side, y'all definitely got to get it right, for sure, for sure. Is that in on that? And a scourge of the tongue which communicated for thought. Right, that's, that's what they do when they got their spirit. You know what I'm saying? They get to say the darndest things with their mouth. For real. All right, next, go back to the article. Number two, we're going to deal with the second sign. Number two, uh -huh. you try to diminish your friend's accomplishments. This means that you try to downplay <laughs> your friend's accomplishments. Like, say, for example, say you get a, uh, say you get a, a raise or something, right? And then somebody will be like, oh, you just... You just got there because the new manager, he giving raises. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, they just try to downplay. To, for no, then nobody asked them to do it. Right. But you just start to downplay, you know what I'm saying, your friend accomplishments when stuff good happened. Uh, it wasn't it went all that. It went, you know what I'm saying? Keep reading. Sometimes jealousy will come through as denial. Uh -huh. And as a result, you'll try and downplay your friend's success. Right. So... When people be in denial, they don't want to accept the fact that you got what you deserved. You did right. You did what you were supposed to do. You got what you deserved. They in denial don't want to accept it. Nah, it was it was something. It was, you know what I'm saying? He got lucky. You know. So on and so forth. Read on. In other times, you might try to knock them down a peg or two mm. by telling them their achievements aren't as big as they think they are. Mm. Either way, you're not acting supportive and need to examine your motives. You're not acting supportive and need to examine your motives. Why you? Why not support your brother? Why not encourage? Why not be happy for him? You got a down. What you down playing it for? Why? You got to examine it. Cause in your mind, you didn't sin. You know what I'm saying? You ain't lie. You ain't deal falsely. You ain't, you ain't commit nothing. You just kind of like. Downplay his happiness, his situation. If you don't examine yourself, you not knowing you are a murderer. You don't even you don't even know it. From there, Matthew 12, verse 22. About the second sign. Trying to downplay your friend's accomplishments. And this happens in Israel. For real. The book of Matthew, chapter 12 and verse 22. Mm -hmm. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, mm -hmm. blind and dumb. And he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. So this Christ, the people bringing people to him, he healing them, performing miracles. Read. And all the people were amazed. They was what? Amazed. They was amazed. Damn. Read. And said. Is this the son of David? Right. Is this the, is this the Christ that the Bible talking about? They were starting to believe. Hmm. They were starting to think in their, mind, in their mind that he was the Christ that was supposed to come. But guess what the jealous folks did? Watch this, read. But when the Pharisees heard <laughs> it. But when the Pharisees heard it, instead of them being like, damn, you write this show what the scripture said the Savior was going to do. <laughs> hmm. Instead of that, look what they did. They said... This fellow doeth not cast out, de out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Right, the only reason he able to do that cause the, is he working with the devil. Mm -hmm. He sold his soul to the devil. That's why, that's why he got that power. Trying to downplay, he, he, he be healing the people of your nation. Mm -hmm. He healing, he bringing restoration to the nation, and you trying to say he the devil? I'm telling you, bro. This, and their spirit be on some brothers. They just want to downplay your good works for no reason. From there, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 25. If you're not in this spirit, 
you're not in the spirit. For some reason, everybody happy for a brother. You that brother off to the side, like, yeah, you he was all right. <laughs> he did all right. Watch this. Read what you got. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 25. Uh-huh. That there should be no schism in the body. Schism means division. We ain't supposed to have no divisions in the body. Read. But that the members should have the same care for one another. Watch this. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Uh huh. Or one member be honored. If one brother get honor, read. All the members rejoice with it. All everybody supposed to rejoice with them. You win, we all win. That's supposed to be the spirit, but you, you want to downplay them, though. Uh, yeah, whatever. I'll let y'all, shalom, I'm deaf, and we'll be happy for him. I'm going to just kind of sit over here to the side. You ain't in the spirit. You not in the, you the, you the schism. You the problem. If one member rejoice, we all rejoice with it. For some reason, you don't want to rejoice with your brother, you got the devil on you. You jealous. All right, from there, give me the third. Go back to the article. Give me the third sign. Number three. Uh huh. You avoid your friend. You do what? You avoid your friend. You start to avoid a brother. Hmm. Don't want to be around a brother. Hmm. Come on. Whether on Facebook or in person, you'll go out of your way to avoid talking to your friend. You will go out of your way. To avoid talking to their person. Hmm. Read. You'll dread the thought of listening to their positive stories, so you'll fail to return calls and emails. Right. Uh, we all be around. Better get this. Soon as a brother, you, we was in the circle having a conversation. Soon as that brother started talking, for some reason, you got to get up and go somewhere. Somewhere else. Just because you don't want to hear him talk. Because you don't want to, you despise his wisdom that he got. And y'all came in at the same time, but you can't bring out what he bring out. Same thing with sisters. Just up and get up for no reason. Read on. Ignoring a friend so you don't have to listen to them talk about the good things going on with them mm. is a rotten thing to do to a friend. That's a what? It's a rotten thing to do to a friend. Even Esau, the devil, knows that. Ignoring a friend because you don't want to listen to the good things he got going. You don't want to hear the blessings he, t- he talking about. And you got that. That's a writing thing to do. Read. And definitely signifies an element of jealousy. Mm-hmm. Here are three more rotten okay. things. Well, yeah. All right, from oh, there. Now nah, you good. You good. Go to 1 Samuel 18, verse 10. So you start to avoid that brother, that sister. You start to avoid the brother and sister. Read what you got. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 18, verse 10. And it came to pass on, on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house, and David played with his hand as at other times. Right, so David got the plan on the heart. You know what I'm saying? The, the mu- good music. Read. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand. Saul had a ja- javelin in his hand, a disc. Read. And Saul cast the javelin, mm-hmm. for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. So in his mind, he was going to smite David to the wall with the javelin. But they pew, pew, got up out of there. All right, read. And Saul was afraid of David. So after that, after you see David had the super ninja skills and he avoided the javelin twice, he got scared of the brother. Like, damn, I can't move like that. Read. Because the Lord was with him Uh and was departed from Saul. The spirit left him. Read. Therefore Saul removed him from him. He what? Removed him from him. So David was his armor bearer. You know what I'm saying? The man right next to him at all times to protect him. Nothing wrong doing nothing to the brother but killing for him. And Saul did what? Removed him from him. He removed him from him. That's what we just what we just read in the article. I keep reading. And made him his captain over a thousand. Uh-huh. And he went out and came in before the people. So get it. You, you go do your thing somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you around me no more. From there. 
Go to Luke 6.22. So if you're on the receiving end, this is how you should feel. You know you're doing something right. David ain't thinking like, damn, the king removed me from him? I must got the devil on me. No, just because her brother started to do that, that don't mean that you got the devil on you. That mean they got the devil on them, most likely. Read what you got. The book of Luke, chapter 6 and verse 22. Mm -hmm. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. And when they shall separate you from their company. Christ said, you blessed when men shall separate you from their company. Because they did the same thing to Christ. You blessed when men start to avoid you. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't want to hear about you. They don't want to be in your great presence. You ain't doing nothing but provoking them to good works. But in their mind, you know what I'm saying? You shining on them. Oh, you just mad because I'm styling on. Yeah, yeah, y'all seen that? Have y'all seen that clip? Hey, I would play that clip. It was a rap battle. <laughs> and the dude said, Oh, you just mad because I'm styling on you. That's all he said. He didn't say, Your mama a B. I'm going to kill your daddy. And nothing like that. He said, Oh, you just mad because I'm styling on you. And dude knocked him out. Smooth out. Knocked his hat off his head. For real. Because he was mad, he was dialing on him. <laughs> he really was mad. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Keep reading. And shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Right. They're going to start to try to make up stuff about you, try to make it seem like you ain't who you say you is, even though you might not even say you nobody. Everybody else, you ain't who they say you is. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's spirit, that evil spirit that get on people. From there, 2 Maccabees 14, 25. If you in the spirit of Christ, you really love your brother, this how you going to be. This how you know if you avoid your brother, you are out of the spirit. You are Satan, walking with two legs. The book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 14 and verse 24. Verse 24. And he would not willingly have Judas out of his sight. Mm -hmm. For he loved the man from his heart. Right, so when this brother, the way he loved his brother, he said, if, if, if it's absolutely no reason not to, I don't want you out of my sight. That's how we supposed to be with our brothers. You supposed to love your brother to the point where, you know what I'm saying, you come over my house, hey, bro, nah, look, 30 more minutes, mm -hmm. 45 more minutes. Y'all remember I used to have them soldiers meeting in my house? Mm -hmm. I ain't never want brothers to leave. You know what I'm saying? For real. But nah, if a look, if a look, I ain't never begged nobody to stay, but I kind of be like, damn, there going? they go. You know what I'm saying? Because you know one brother leave, everybody else start leaving. They just need that one. Yeah. The first one to leave was the devil. Now I'm just <laughs> playing. <laughs> oh, I don't know who it was, though. I don't know who it was. It was it was him, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go to Jude 19. Oh. <sighs> All right. Jude, verse 19. Mm -hmm. These be they who separate themselves. Who do what? Separate themselves. What? Sensual, uh -huh. having not the spirit. So that's not the spirit right there. You know what I'm saying? Avoiding your friend. Don't want to be around your brothers. You know what I'm saying? That's not the spirit of God. You got the spirit of jealousy on you. All right? So from there, let's go back to the article, sign number four. Number four, you're more clingy with your friend. So on the flip side, you got that person that showed their jealousy by avoiding a friend. Then you got this person who want to be around a person more. This is interesting, right? You become more clingy with the person you jealous of. Hmm. hmm, let's see, read. The opposite of avoidance and friendship is clinginess, but both can originate from the same jealous feelings. Mm -hmm. In this instance, instead of running from a friend, you're afraid to leave their side. Hmm. This type of behavior happens when someone makes new friends. When someone make a new friend and you're afraid they will leave your friendship in favor of another one. Hmm. You might That happens in this truth. That happens in this truth. Brother come in, 
He wearing down your the, your doorstep, trying to get the wisdom. Sister always calling, asking questions. That friend you was close to, talking to all the time, all of a sudden they like they get that feeling like, damn, he he just now knowing this brother, and he always talking to this brother. So either they start to avoid you, or they become more clingy with you. Right? You might become clingy out of fear. Mm -hmm. Another time this can occur is when you're jealous. I mean, it's when you're so jealous. Watch this. You're looking for gossip to spread to someone else. You what? You're looking for gossip to spread to someone else. You just waiting. You want to be around them so you can catch them doing something they ain't supposed to be doing. You want to catch that person slipping. That Now, that happens a lot. That We witnessed that with the whole Bezalel and all of that. He was, he was going over Bishop House, and he already had tapes and all of that. He knew what he was doing. He was just trying to get more and more dirt to collect. This happens, right? So you hang out more with your friend just so you can have more to trash talk about later on. Now, let's see. Is this just Esau wisdom in the article, or is, is this in the Bible? Sirach 6 and 8. This is in the Bible. You hang out more with your friend just so you can have more to trash talk about later on. Watch this. The book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. For some man is a friend for his own occasion mm -hmm. and will not abide in the day of thy trouble. He ain't going to stand by your side when you're going through it, right? And there is a friend who uh -huh. being turned to enmity. You end up turning into your enemy. And strife uh -huh. will discover thy reproach. He will what? Discover thy reproach. Meaning, he was beside you. He was with you. You did something, and he recorded it. He had it in his memory. He he stored it up just to bring it out whenever y'all wasn't friends no more, to expose you. This is a friend. This is a type of friend that'll be that'll be your friend. He'll just he just waiting on that moment to catch you doing something wicked just to put it out there when it's all said and done. Go to chapter 37 and verse 10. So you having that wisdom, you gotta you gotta be able to discern that. If a brother always trying to catch you slipping, trying to, you know what I'm saying? This is what God said. Sirach 37 and 10. The book of Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 10. Uh -huh. Consult not with one that suspecteth thee, hmm. and hide thy counsel from such an envy, uh, as, from such as Read that envy part thee, again. and hide thy counsel from such as envy thee. So if you know, you just feel the vibe like somebody jealous of you and envious of you. Don't sit up there and spend one-on-one -on -one time, y'all chopping it up, you telling them secrets. Secrets, that's what women like to do. Tell each other secrets and stuff. Yeah, man, look, y'all gotta, hey, right. If you, cause y'all be knowing too, y'all know when a sister really don't like y'all, but it kind of perplex y'all cause the sister always around y'all. Like, I don't think she like me, but she always around. That means she the damn, the, the sign, the fourth sign. She just trying to find some dirt on you. She trying to seek your counsel out to bring it out, to expose you for being wicked so she can seem like she better. For real. Go to Sirach 12 and 12. The book of Sirach, chapter 12 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. Set him not by thee, lest when he hath overthrown thee. He stand up in thy place, uh -huh. neither let him sit at thy right hand. Neither let him what? Sit at thy right hand. Right, so why God have to warn you about letting, not letting somebody sit at your right hand? Because this enemy is not making himself obvious as an enemy. He's trying to disguise himself as your friend. He wants your position. He wants your seat. He wants your spot. She wants your seat. She wants your spot. That's the only reason why she around you. She waiting on the opportunity to overthrow you. Free. And thou at the last, remember my words and be pricked therewith. So after this class, don't say I ain't want you. Alright? <clears throat> From there. Go back to the art. The fifth sign. 
Now we gonna deal with the spirit of competition. Number five. Mm -hmm. You feel the need to compete with your friend. You what? You feel the need to compete with your friend. This is the fifth sign that you are jealous. You feel the need to compete with your friend. Nobody told you. Nobody asked you. You just feel the need to compete with your friend, with your brother, with your sister. Three. You know you're feeling jealous when you run right out of right out to beat your friend's record or top their achievement. Hmm. Perhaps you think that by doing more than your friend is doing, you'll eliminate your feelings of jealousy. Right, that's you trying to fight the jealous spirit. You know it's on you. You know what I'm saying? But being more putting more work, you're gonna eventually get out of that spirit because you just gonna become better. You know what I'm saying? what you think in your mind. Three. Right? Sometimes friends do compete with each other, uh -huh. and this competition can be healthy and allow both of you to push yourselves farther than you ever had before. This is like camp 101, boot camp. You know what I'm saying? We doing drills and competing to build each other up, challenge one another. That's healthy, and it's, pro it's a proven fact. Some of y'all brothers beast on the street from coming to MOV. Camp 101, getting built up. Three. It's when you want to compete as a way to deal with jealous feelings that this behavior can be bad. Right, you're doing that spite. You ain't doing it for the, for the healthy sake. You really just want to outdo your brother or your sister. That's when you know it's evil. Right? A better approach is to figure out why you're jealous of your friend and work on that instead. Mm -hmm. Sure, you can still work toward your own goals, but don't be a bad friend in the process. Mm -hmm. After all, don't you want your friends to support you when you have happy news? Okay, I'll pray to the most. All right, so from there, go to Mark 9, verse 33. Now give me the definition of compete. The definition of compete. Compete. <clears throat> Strive to gain or win something by defeating or establishing superiority over others who are trying to do the same. Mm. Y'all on the same mission, doing the same thing, but you striving to gain or establish superiority over them for some reason. Y'all serving the same purpose, y'all doing the same thing, but you just wanna out, you wanna go harder, you wanna be better, not for the Lord's sake, just out of that spirit of jealousy. For real. Now, remember this, look, this is, we Israelites, we repentant Israelites, all right? We finna read about the people, we finna read about that had this spirit was repentant Israelites, walking with the Messiah. So if you listening to this class and you thinking in your head, oh, I would never, there's something wrong with you, man. There's something wrong with this class is for every soul in here. Right. You gotta be able to identify when that spirit is on you and you gotta shut it down. For real. The disciples, the 12, had that spirit on them for a while. Mark 9, 33. The book of Mark, chapter nine and verse 33. And he came to Capernaum, and being in the house, he asked them, what was it that ye disputed among yourselves by the way? Right, so Christ, they was on their way somewhere, and he waited, you know what I'm saying, to the time presented itself, and he asked them, what was y'all arguing about? What was, that, what was that whole disputation I heard in the background? Read. But they held their peace. But they, they was too shamed to say what they was arguing about. Read. <laughs> For by the way they had disputed among themselves, who should be the greatest? Mm -hmm. who, the, who the best house? <laughs> who the, who the, the strongest soldier? They was leadership wife. Who the, who the most loved leadership wife? Who sisters feel more comfortable talking to? Who sisters want to be around more? Who want to learn more from? Who they want to learn more from? This, this is righteous people, righteous men, was having these disputations. So y'all better than the 12? Now these men gonna be judging the 12 tribes of Israel in the kingdom forever. Right. And they had that spirit. 
but you ain't got it. Yeah, sure. I agree. And he sat down and called the twelve uh -huh. and saith unto them, Reed? If any man desire to be first. If you desire to be first, you want to be the top dog. Reed? The same shall be last of all mm. and servant of all. Mm. And he took a child and set him in the midst of them. Uh -huh. And when the and when he had taken him in his arms, he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name, mm -hmm. receiveth me. And whosoever shall receive me, receiveth not me, but him that sent me. Right. So Christ is telling you, you know what I'm saying, you're supposed to. It don't matter what works or what, what a brother doing or whatever, we're supposed to have the same love and care one for another. Like we read in 1 Corinthians 12, 25. That's what he's telling them. That's what he's showing them. It ain't about who better, who got superiority or nothing like that. The greater you are, the more responsibility you're going to have. The greater condemnation. Keep reading. Verse 38. Mm -hmm. And John answered him saying, mm -hmm. Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. Right. So John, this was not his brother, but I'm going to show y'all who he was. You know what I'm saying? But John. And he followeth not us. Uh -huh. And we forbade him because he followeth not us. So it was a brother casting out devils in the name of Christ, but he wasn't with them. Like how you would see another camp or something like that. He said he went and forbade them. He went and stopped them because he, he wasn't rolling with the 12. Read. But Jesus said, uh -huh. forbid him not. Do what? Forbid him not. Nah, don't stop. So this show you that Christ wasn't about competition. He wasn't about, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't into that. Say forbid him not, read. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. Right. He ain't doing, he not against me, he for me. So why shut him down? Why stop him? Read. For he that is not against us is on our part. Right. Now go to Matthew 20 and verse 20. The book of Matthew, chapter 20 and verse 20. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children, with, with her sons worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. Right, so the, the son of Zebedee's is John and James, right? The sons of thunder. They mama came to Christ trying to make something happy. Read. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She said, She saith unto him, uh -huh. Grant that these my two sons my, may sit the one on thy right hand and the other on the left in the kingdom, in right. thy kingdom. Right, so, okay, she coming out, you know, this the woman, this the mama. You know what I'm saying? Okay, she coming with some foolishness. But we just read earlier, you know what I'm saying, they had that discussion amongst themselves. So, obviously, okay, they could have shut that, they could have shut her mom, they mama down before she even came to Christ with that. But they slick wanted it, though. You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't have had no problem being the top two men sitting on the side of Christ. You know what I'm saying? Well, watch, watch what Christ's response was. Read. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She saith unto him, Grant thy, these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. You don't know what you're asking for. Read. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? What do they mean? Somebody explain it to me. What does that mean? Meaning the, the, the closer you is to me, the more higher you is in my sight, the more, you know what I'm saying, uh, what's the word? Persecution. The more persecution is going to happen to you. You gonna be put to death. You gonna you wanna get put to death? Like I'm gonna get put to death. You show that's what you wanna do. Read. They say unto him, We are able. Uh huh. And he saith unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup. I bet then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You is going. That is gonna happen to you. Spoiler alert. Read. Cause they did. They did get put to death. Acts twelve and one show you. You know what I'm saying? James got put to death. John was exiled on the island of Patmos. You know what I'm saying? It happened. Read. And be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. Mm -hmm. But to sit on my right hand and on my left uh -huh. is not mine to give. Wait a minute. What? Hmm. Read that again? It says, but to sit on my right hand and on my left 
is not mine to give. So Christ said, I ain't control the rank. <laughs> that ain't, I don't, I don't give rank. That ain't even my call. But I think it's Cap. Mm -hmm. Damn, I got to get cool with Cap so he can raise me up. That got to be. You thought it was Cap, huh? You thought you had to get close to Levi, huh? Christ said, look, it ain't even me, y'all. I ain't, I ain't going to determine who's sitting on the left or right of me. Read. But it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. Right. That's why whenever y'all do works, man, y'all got to always know that trust it the most high is watching. Don't worry about what men say or what men see. You doing everything for the most high. He said he's not unrighteous to forget your labor of love. You know what I'm saying? He going to render every man according to his work. Read on. Verse 9. But Jesus called them unto verse him. Verse 9. I mean, verse 25. I don't know where 24. I got 24. 24, sorry, y'all. Watch this. And when the 10 heard it. So when the other 10 heard that them two was trying to sit on the right and left of Christ, they were moved with indignation against the two brothers. They got mad as hell. They, what y'all brothers trying to be over us? Y'all think y'all better than us or something? That caused schism in the body. Mm -hmm. That causes schism within the 12. Y'all got to understand that, man. For real. Read on. But Jesus called them unto him and said, mm -hmm. Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them. Right, like at your jobs. You know what I'm saying? That you got a boss. Y'all got to realize he is he not the boss. Cap not the boss. Bishop, they not, we not bosses. Ain't no bosses in Israel. We leaders. We leaders, period. We not bosses. In the world, at your job, you got a boss that just sit back and don't do a damn thing and let you do all the work and fire you whenever you get ready. A real leader going to show you how to do the work. He going to be that example. That's what Christ did. He didn't come on the earth and tell the 12, go do all this and do that, and just sit back. Nah, he went and showed them how to do it. He led the example. Read on. And they that are great exercise authority upon them. So when you brothers get raised up, when you sisters become leadership wives, it ain't that don't mean it's time to be exercising authority. Can't wait to exercise authority over brother. Hey, bro, go do this. Go do that. Hey, you know what I'm saying? No, that ain't what this is about, man. We got order, of course. You get corrected accordingly and stuff like that, but that's not what we get raised up for. It ain't about you being over your brother. It's about you having the ability to lead and inspire your brother to do the same works you're doing. Keep reading. But it shall not be so among you. Right, that ain't how we roll. Ain't no bosses in Israel, read. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Whoever the greatest among you, he going to be your minister. He going to be the one always helping, always there, showing you, instructing you, giving you the ropes, not just telling you what to do. Read on. And whosoever will be a chief among you, uh -huh. let him be your servant. Read. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto. Right. Christ didn't come to be ministered unto. He the Son of God, King of Kings. He didn't touch this earth for people to come. Lord, what, what, what can I do for you? Lord, what do you need of me? He didn't, he didn't come for that. He ain't come to sit on no throne and everybody come ask him for stuff. That ain't, that ain't what he came for, read. But to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Christ came to heal, to feed, to restore, to teach, and to give his life for the nation. We got to follow that example. You believe you got to follow that example, right? So that should be the mindset of every last one of y'all instead of just being ready to compete with your brother. All right, from there, go to John 20 and verse 1. They were still, hey, they still had little competitions and stuff, though. After all the speeches, even after this class, it's the spirit still going to be there because of what? Denial. Denial. Nah, that ain't me. That ain't, I don't. I do not feel like that. I. I. I, I don't. I don't feel like that. <laughs> All right. John twenty verse one. The book of John chapter twenty and verse one. 
The first day of the week cometh Mary, Magdalene, early when it was yet dark, mm -hmm. unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Mm -hmm. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. All right, so she came to these two men, two of the twelve, right? And saith unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, uh -huh. and we know not where they have laid him. Right, we don't know where Christ's body is. So, remember, y'all know who Peter is, right? You know what I'm saying? When you read the scriptures, it seemed like he the chief man, because he, he was the mouthpiece. You know what I'm saying? He was always at the forefront. But then you had the other disciple was the one that Jesus loved. These two, they had their little secret little thing going on. Watch this, read. Peter therefore went forth uh -huh. and that other disciple and came to the sepulchre. Right, so they went to the, to the sepulchre together, read. So they ran both together. Watch this. And the other disciple did outrun Peter. Why are you trying to outrun? I'm trying to get there first. Racing to the damn grave site. Nah, he going to know I care more. I'm trying to get there first. That's what they thinking in their mind. Trying to outrun a brother. These is spiritual men of 12. Which Y'all ain't like that, though. <laughs> uh, okay, read. And came first to the sepulcher. Right, he made sure yeah, he came first, read. And he, stooping down and looking in, uh -huh. saw the linen clothesline, Yet went he not in. Watch this. Then come of Simon Peter following him, and went into the <laughs> sepulchre, and see the linen clothes lie. Right, so Peter went on in there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you beat me just to not go in? Look, watch this. You know what I'm saying? They had their own little secret competition going on, man. Go to John chapter 21, verse 20. John chapter 21, verse 20. This is after Christ's resurrection. He giving them a little farewell speech or whatever. And watch what's on Peter, mind. Read what you got. The book of John, chapter 21 and verse 20. Mm -hmm. Then Peter, turning about, seeked the disciple whom Jesus loved, following, which also leaned on his breast mm -hmm. at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Right. So think about it. Now, Christ said when I was going to betray him, right? But Peter, notice who he looking at when he bring it up. He wanted to be the brother that Jesus loved because he wanted seed. He wanted to be in that position. You know what I'm saying? He wanted that to be him, so he wanted that brother to be the one that betrayed Christ. But it wasn't. Read on. Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Watch this. Lord, and what shall this man do? What, what he going to do? What, what, what's going to be his destiny? The hell you worried about him for? Peter worrying about their brother. Because he was just like jealous. <laughs> Read on. Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come. If I want him to, to, to stay alive till I return. Read. What is that to thee? The hell they got to do with you? What you worry about it for? This is how Christ talked to his disciples. So, hey, I ain't going to say that. But, hey, right. I'll pray to the most high. Right. He said, what, what is that to you? What they got to do with you? What you worry about it for? Read. Follow thou me. Follow thou me. That's all you need to be worried about, following me. Read verse 24. Verse 24. This is the disciple which testifieth of these things. Right, so this brother wrote this whole book in third person. It's John, the author. He's saying, I'm the disciple that Jesus said he loved. Read. And wrote these things. And we know that, he testimony, that his testimony is true. Right, so Peter and John... The disciple who he loved, they had a little, you know what I'm saying? They was always going at it on who was the greatest disciple. You know what I'm saying? Go to 2 Corinthians 10, verse 12. Let's see what they wise. Was they in the spirit for doing that? Was that wisdom? 2 Corinthians 10 and 12. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 10 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that command that commend themselves. Mm -hmm. But they measuring themselves by themselves. Right, meaning you measure your works according to the next brother. Oh, he doing this and this, so all I got to do is this to seem like I'm this. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he also 10, and he over this much, so I got to be over that much. 
and a little more, and I'm gonna be, nah. It say measuring themselves by themselves, re and comparing themselves and doing what? Comparing themselves and doing what? Comparing themselves. Comparing themselves, re um, amongst themselves are not wise. That is not wise. That is very foolish and childish and evil and wicked. So don't do that. Don't be sitting around trying to compare who better, who greater. And, no. We all doing the same mission. Christ said, follow thou me. We all just trying to get the kingdom. We should want to help one another. You know what I'm saying? First Maccabees chapter 5. First Maccabees 5, 17. The book of First Maccabees, chapter 5, and verse 17. Then said Judas unto Simon his brother, choose thee, out, um, choose thee out men, and go, and deliver thy brethren that are in Galilee, for I and Jonathan my brother will go into the country of Galad. Mm -hmm. So he left Joseph the son of Zacharias, and Azarias, captains of the people, with the remnant of the host in Judea to keep it. Right. So the brothers was going out the battle, going out the war, right? And you told them two brothers, their assignment was to stay back and hold it down. That was the office given unto them. Let's see what spirit came on them. Verse 56. Verse 56. Joseph, the son of Zacharias and Azarias, captains of the garrison. Right, the brothers that we just read about, they were supposed to hold it down, right? Watch what happened, read. Heard of the valiant acts and warlike deeds which they had done. They heard about what Judas then was doing, how they was, you know, running through nations and, you know what I'm saying, being mighty as hell and all of that. Read. Wherefore they said, let us also get us a name. Let us what? Let us also get us a name. Oh, let me... Yeah, I can do it too. Yeah, you mean? I, I'm capable. I can do the same thing. Let us get us a name. A name amongst who? To the most high or to men? Exactly. They wanted to, uh, they wanted to be, they wanted to have that notoriety amongst Israel. It said, let us get us a name, Re. Right? And go fight against the heathen that are round about us. Now, their assignment, their order, was to stay back and hold it down. They were like, now nah, we're going to go fight against the heathen. We're going to go be there so they can think the same thing about us. Watch this, read. Verse 58. So when they had given charge unto the garrison that was with them, they went towards Jamnia. Uh -huh. Then came Gorgias and his men out of the city to fight against them. Watch this. And so it was that Joseph and Azarias were put to flight. What does that mean? They was put to flight. Just run. They got the running. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll take that. They was put to flight. You right, read. And pursued unto the borders of Judea. Uh -huh. And there were slain that day of the people of Israel about 2,000 men. So if they fulfilled their role, did what they were supposed to do, hold it down, would anybody have gotten hurt? No. But they went, they, like, they was mighty. And let us get us a name and all of that. And they got that tail put to flight. And they got 2,000 brothers killed. There's blood on their hands. You know what I'm saying? Read on. Thus was there a great overthrow among the children of Israel, uh -huh. because they were not obedient unto Judas. Because what? They were not obedient unto Judas. That's another thing, too, man. Hey, you brothers, man, look. When y'all get offices, sisters, too. You know what I'm saying? Remember the order. You know what I'm saying? It's always checkpoints. It's always a chain of command. It's, you might be over something, just like officers are right. You know what I'm saying? I could be over the, uh, say I'm over Princess the Kings, and you never see him here. He don't do it or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But in reality, he over me. He got the ultimate say so in what I can and can't do. That's order. You see what I'm saying? That's how it go. 
So when you get something, don't think, when you get some authority over something, don't think that you can just do your own thing. They got the specific order to stay put, hold it down. But they thought, hey, they gave, they gave us control of this right here. We can do what the hell we want to do. You know what I'm saying? And that got 2,000 brothers killed. Read. Because they were not obedient unto Judas and his brethren, but thought but to when, do, but thought. They thought. Read. <laughs> to do some valiant act. They thought they was going to do a valiant act. They thought it. You thought, but it did not happen. The opposite happened. From there, number 16, verse 1. The book of Numbers, chapter 16, and verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Izar, mm -hmm. the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abram, the sons of Eliab, and on the, <clears throat> and on the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. They what? Took men. They took men. They persuaded. They got in some men's heads. And it's going to show you what they did with those men. Read. And they rose up before Moses. They what? They rose up before Moses. So notice, before they rise up, they got to get in some simple brothers' heads, you know, to pump them up. Like, you got you to gotta follow me. Watch what I do. This is going to be the way. This is going to be what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And we didn't see this happen. This thing came to pass with captains. 400, 200, 100, officers of 80, 50, from everywhere. You know what I'm saying? They let foolish brothers get in their head to rise up against leadership. And they got put to flight. <laughs> or keep reading. Though. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, uh -huh. 250 princes of the assembly. 200, 250 men. So it wouldn't know that that was some work. That didn't just happen in one day. Overnight. They was in their ear, they was they was working on it. You know what I'm saying? Once they got that number they wanted. All right, it's it's time now. Let's go in. Let's do it. Read. Famous in the congregation. They was what? Famous in the congregation. Men of renown. So these brothers was men of status, men of rank. Already, but would it say a covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion? They was already famous. They had the respect. But they weren't satisfied with it, though. I want to sit in Moses' seat. He think he's some. Hell, he get mad and he break tables. I want to do that. He got an anger problem. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I'm all fit for, I'm all fit for that spot because he be getting mad. I'm telling you, this is the type of stuff that was in their mind. Keep reading. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you. You're taking too much on you. Now, remember, we're going to read it later on, but Moses was so humble, man. You know what I'm saying? He, didn't, he, he did not want to have all that responsibility on him. He begged the Most High to raise up some other brothers to help him. That was the spirit Moses had, but in they mind, because they jealous, Moses, you trying to you trying to get the preeminence. You if you just trying to you trying to make that scene in your mind like a brother got that spirit, you the devil. Something wrong with you. Keep reading. Seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Now look, look, look at the foolishness they saying. It's the same congregation. That every time they got thirsty, they complaining against the Lord, complaining against Moses. Every time they get hungry, complaining against the Lord, complaining against Moses. They was not holy. The, Moses had to beg the Most High not to kill all of them and start fresh with him. But in their mind, we all holy. We all holy. Why you won't raise us up? Read. Wherefore, then lift you up yourselves above the congregation. Why are you lifting up yourself above the congregation? Who lifted Moses up? The Most High. Who they really mad at? Keep reading. Of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. He couldn't believe it. Like, is you serious? The only reason y'all alive, because I didn't want to lift myself up. 
Moses could have been like, damn, the Mosesites, that sound good as hell. Moses, I told him, look, I would start all over with you. He could have been like, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. That's, that's honorable right there. But he didn't think like that. But that's how they wanted the people to think that he thought. Hmm. For real. Jump down to verse 31. Verse 31. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them. Right, so he gave the people the opportunity. Look, you either going to get on this side or you going to get on their side with them. But I'm warning you, the Most High going to expose who not on his side. So the ground clave asunder. This is the first recorded earthquake in history in the Bible. It said the ground clave asunder that was under them. Read. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up. Mm -hmm. And their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods. Mm. They and all that uh, appertained to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished for, from among the congregation. Just imagine seeing that. Like, they getting swallowed up by the earth. Like, the one second you're here, and the next second you're gone. In the earth, alive. You know what I'm saying? You ain't get killed and get buried. The earth took you. For real, read. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. So they ran away from where the earthquake was at, thinking they was going to get away. But watch this, read. Verse 35. And there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. So them 250 brothers that joined them to rise up against Moses and tried to run from the earthquake, they, they, they judgment, the Most High sent the fire to burn them up. So if you got that spirit of competition on you, you want to outdo, you want to overthrow leadership, you think you more fit, and you roll in that spirit, you see your judgment. You see your judgment. Go to 2 Samuel 15, verse 2. The book of 2 Samuel, chapter 15, and verse 2. And Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate, and it was so that when any man that had a controversy came to the king for judgment, then Absalom called unto him and said, of what city art thou? And he said, Thy servant is of one of the tribes of Israel. So who is Absalom, y'all? He was King David's son. He was the son of the king, meaning he was a what? A prince. All right, so it said, read verse 2 again. Verse 2. And Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate, and it was so that when any man that had a controversy came, anybody had an issue, anybody seeking counsel, read, came to the king for judgment, then Absalom called unto him and so, said... So, hold on, wait. So, they come into the king mm -hmm. for judgment. The king for counsel. He said, I'm going to the king, to the leader. He like, oh, no, 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 no. Let me, let me out let you. Read. Of what city art thou? Mm -hmm. And he said, thy servant is of one of the tribes of Israel. And watch this. And Absalom said unto him, See, thy matters are good and right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, see, I know you've seen counsel. Okay. But there is no man deputed of the king to hear thee. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody going to be able to bring your stuff to the king. So he lying to them just to get them to counsel with him. Read. Absalom said, moreover. Now, this was his inner thought, his inner feelings. This is how he felt. This how some brothers feel when brothers get raised up over them. Read. Oh, that I were made judge in the land. Oh, that I was made judge in the land. Man, if I was the one teaching seventh class, man, we'll be so built up, man. If I was the sister over the sister circle, sister get they act together, we'd be so peaceful. Mm. I'm telling you, that'd be the inner thought in people's mind. He said, oh, that I were made judge in the land. Read that every man which hath any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. So King David, a mighty man. God said he was a man after his heart. 
He said, I can be better than David. I would judge matters better than David. That need to be me in that seat. But you the king's son, that mean it's gonna you gotta wait on your ministry. <laughs> you the king, you gonna be king. But he ain't thinking like that. It's my throne and I need it now. <laughs> Keep reading. And it was so that when any man came nigh to him to do him obeisance, uh huh. He put forth his hand and took him and kissed him. Right, like we read in number 16, it said they took men. You know what I'm saying? Whenever men came under him, he took them. Meaning he he got in their mind, he got in their head to follow him and kiss them. Read. And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. Right. That's a, that's a competition spirit. I want the people to look at me and to follow me. I want them to seek my counsel. Go to Acts 20 and verse 30. This is why, like I was saying, the spirit, that spirit is in here, y'all. This Bible, this stuff ain't in a Bible for no reason. Paul finna tell us that the spirit is amongst us. Brothers got this spirit like this. The book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 30. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things. Read that, read that again from the top. The book of Acts, chapter 20 and verse 30. Also of your own selves. Of what? Of your own selves. This is, this is, me, this is the congregation in Ephesus. He's speaking to the Ephesians. He letting them know, look, it's people in y'all body, in y'all church, among y'all. Read. Shall men arise. Speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Ain't that what Absalom did? Speaking perverse things to get in the people's head to make them think, oh, the king, man, the king, he be drunk. He, go, he ain't going to give you the right counsel. He don't, he don't know what he's talking about. Hell, he a hypocrite. He ain't applying the, the scriptures with his wife. He, this the type of stuff they put in people's head to get the people to follow them instead of the leader that the Most High put in place. Remember, y'all, this look, he said he came not for the righteous. He came for them that were sick. You know what I'm saying? We all done dealt with this, man. We all need this medicine. We all need to let this sink in so when the spirit arrives, you know what to do. Y'all understand? If he say it's going to be men of your own selves with this spirit, believe that. Believe what the Bible say. So prepare yourself. Make sure it ain't you. Make sure it ain't you. Be not a forgetful hearer. All right, Numbers 11, verse 24. This is how a real leader going to operate. A man of God, when they see that type of stuff going on, they're going to shut it down. The book of Numbers, chapter 11, and verse 24. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And the Lord came down in a cloud. Now, this, this was what I was uh, paraphrasing earlier. You know what I'm saying? Earlier in the chapter, Moses begged because Israel just kept getting on his damn nerves. So he was like, look, Most High, look. You either going to give me some men to help me or you just going to kill me because I can't do it. <laughs> I cannot deal with these Israelites, man. They something else. Hmm. Well, brothers want to be leadership so bad. <laughs> man, you crazy as hell, man. Crazy. For real. So, so the Most High said, look, okay, I'm going to take 70 men and I'm going to put your spirit on them. So think about Remember, they just rose up against Moses. And they said, you set yourself up too high. You think too highly of yourself. How the hell his spirit, so strong and mighty, he can spread it among 70 others and still have his spirit? That's some crazy. Who in here can spread your spirit among 70 brothers to be leaders of an entire nation? This is how great this man was. And he was not lifted up or puffed up. Watch this, read on. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took 
of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. Y'all see that? The spirit that came up on, that was a portion, a 70th <laughs> of Moses' spirit. And they got to bringing it out. Who got a spirit like that in here? Keep reading. Verse 26. Watch this. But there remained two of the men in the camp. Mm -hmm. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other, Medad. Mm -hmm. And the spirit rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle. Right, they didn't go to the tabernacle, read. Right? And they prophesied in the camp. They was prophesying in the camp, read. Right? And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. Right, they, they going and telling Moses, like, look, it's some brothers, you know what I'm saying, trying to, trying to be like you. They trying to do, they trying to do the stuff that you do, read. Right? And Joshua, the son, of, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, My Lord, Moses, forbid them. Do what? Forbid them. Stop them, Moses. They trying to be, they trying to be like you. They trying to give Israel commandments. They trying to enforce God's law. Stop them. That's your job. So, you know, as the young servant, he think he doing a good thing, just like the disciples. When they said the brother was speaking in his name, doing miracles in his name, and he said, I forbid him. He thought he was in the spirit. And I said, no, nah, hell no. Nah. If he ain't against me, he with me. He's speaking in my name. Yeah. He can't be doing nothing wrong. Watch this, read. And Moses said unto him, envious thou for my sake? You envying for my sake? You must think I'm envious or something. You think I'm jealous, Joshua? Are you trying to be jealous for me? You think I'm a roll like that? Hmm. Read. Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets? Would God will? Nuh -uh. I mean, would God that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them? He said, would God want God to put all this spirit on all the brothers? That's the spirit we supposed to be in. Mm -hmm. He said, I won't get here to, to me. He don't, they the only two. <laughs> they the only two that got it. They the only two doing it. I want him to put a spirit on everybody. That's how humble that man was. He didn't get offended. You know what I'm saying? But that envy stuff, he, he shut that down. From there. James 4, verse 5. It's finna repeat what I've been saying. You know what I'm saying? You can't say that you don't battle with that thing. You're deceiving yourself. The book you of James, got? chapter 4, verse 5. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain? So y'all must think the Bible in vain. Y'all must think the Bible just got words on it where, you know, it don't apply to none of us. Watch this, read. The spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy. The spirit that dwell in every last one of us, it desires to be jealous. It desires to be envious. It want to be better than the next spirit. All of us battle with that. Y'all think the scripture, y'all think the Bible just words typed out the side of its neck. No. The scripture not saying it in vain. Right. So you got to examine yourself. For real. All of our spirits lust to envy. From there, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 3. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, and verse 3. Mm -hmm. for, ye are, for ye are yet carnal, mm -hmm. for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Right, that's carnal. That's, that's a worldly spirit, a worldly emotion. In the world, that's how people do. That's why social media is so turned up. Because the next person want more followers than the next person. More likes, more shares, more views. That's a worldly spirit. Paul saying is y'all niggas in the world or something? Why y'all envious? Why y'all walking like that? Read. For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollo, 
are ye not carnal? Right. So they was doing like, you know, had Joshua when he was young. You know what I'm saying? Some people was like, hey, I come from Paul, my Paul, my elder. Paul, my elder. Some of them was like, no, nah, Paulo, my Paulo, go with it now. That's that's my guy. <laughs> Paul was like, what the hell wrong with y'all? Read on. Who then is Paul? Who is Paul? And who is Apollo? Who, the, who is Apollo? Read. But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. Right. We just ministers of Christ. Christ put the spirit on us to do what we doing. Just like he did to the rest of y'all. All y'all got this spirit. Y'all just don't know it yet. Y'all ain't built up yet. With the same spirit we got is on y'all. It ain't us. Read. I have planted Apollo water, uh -huh. but God gave the increase. But who? God gave the increase. The real author behind it all is God. The real teacher is God. The real one putting in all the work, getting this and this and this done, is is God. It's not Officer Ezra, hmm. Officer Zarah, Officer Baruch. No, it ain't us. It's the spirit. Read on. Verse 7. So then, neither is he that planteth anything, mm -hmm. neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Right. So it ain't the person that planted the seed or the person that come in and water it to help it grow. It's, it's God. It's God that's giving an increase. Don't think too highly of yourself. Read on. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. He that planteth and he that watereth are one. Not one is better than the other one. You laid the foundation, brother come in and built on it, guess what? Y'all the same. Why? Because it was all about the building. <laughs> The mission was the building. Somebody needed to lay the foundation. Somebody needed to build off of the foundation. But it's all about the building. Y'all understand that? Yes, Keep reading. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. That's what Cain didn't understand. That's what happened. That's what it caused the spirit of jealousy to come up on you. You forgetting that the Most High, he going to give you according to what you do, what you bring forth. Stop worrying about your brother. What he doing? What is that to thee? Follow thou me. Follow Christ. Do his works. Compete with Christ. That's, that's the challenge right there. Compete with Christ. Fast 40 days, 40 nights here. Feed 5,000 Israelites at one time out of nothing. Do that. Compete with Christ. Teach a multitude thousands. No speaker. No mic. Do that. Compete with Christ, man. Till you go a long way. For real. Keep reading. Now this is it. All right. You got to learn to follow before you compete. That's what Officer Zarai just said. I didn't hear. And he exactly right. You know what I'm saying? That, that's how it go. It's like Joshua that we just read about. He was up under Moses. You know what I'm saying? He ain't do nothing but glean from Moses. He never was like, Moses, I'm, I'm really better than Moses. Because he best believe he could have, you know what I'm saying, especially after he stayed in the tabernacle when the Most High showed himself. He could have got puffed up. He could have got to telling people. And you know he knew Moses' flaws too because he was always around him. Right. He could have got to telling people like, yeah, man, uh, Moses had to ask me where the scripture was. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it, it could have just fed, fed that spirit, and he could have got puffed up. And he would have never got raised up in a position that he was in after Moses passed. You know what I'm saying? You follow, you follow, you follow, and your time going to come. Right. Absalom didn't understand that. You next in line to be king, but you want the throne now. Nah. Bro, you gonna have your time. You got you in the the most high put you in a position just so you can learn how to be that that leader you you destined to be. Right. Just cause you ain't that leader right now don't mean it ain't gonna come to pass. He wants you to learn. He wants you to observe. He wants you to glean from the leaders over you. All right, Galatians five verse twenty six. The book of Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 26. Mm -hmm. 
Let us not be desirous of vain glory, mm -hmm. provoking one another, envying one another. Read it again. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Like Joseph, Azariah, Korah, and them. They wanted that vain glory. They said, let us get us a name. Let us get us a name. Don't be desirous of vain glory. It ain't about what men see. It's about what the most high see. It's about what the Lord see. He the one that's going to reward you according to your work. You think, uh, you think, uh, man, it's long, bro. You brought it out, man. Right? You think that's, that's worth it? You think that's more important than, you know what I'm saying, getting a reward for the most high? You ain't fit to be no leader if you think like that. Y'all see how great Moses was. Here, yeah, they got to worshiping and praising him when he delivered them out of Egypt. But as soon as they got thirsty, Moses, you the devil, you brought us out of Egypt to kill us. You're going to do all that to win the hearts of these brothers. That as soon as you do something wrong, they're going to blame you. You working that hard for the glory that it's vain. It's for nothing. Because them same people going to complain about you. <laughs> they going to complain about you. <laughs> they going to, man, I'm telling you. For real. Keep reading. Provoking one another. Uh -huh. Envying one another. What? Envying one another. So let us not do that. Let us not do that. Because what, what do envy do? What does envy do? Stirs up strife. You're right. You're right. Guess what else it do? Go to Sirach 30, verse 24. Guess what else it do? Instead of you being on your path to everlasting life, inheriting the throne, immortality, and all of that, you got that spirit of jealousy and envy on you. This was going to happen. Read what you got. The book of Sirach, chapter 30 and verse 24. Mm -hmm. Envy and wrath shorten the life. What do envy do? Shorten the life. Envy and wrath shortens the life. It will shorten your lifespan. For real. It will cut, it will cut, cut your life short. So who would, I mean, I would take heed to that. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Envy and wrath shorten the life, right? It says, and carefulness bringeth age before the time. Right, always worrying. Especially you worried about the next brother. You know what I'm saying? You worried about the next brother when he got going. That's going to bring age before the time. For real. I hope y'all understand that. Go to Wisdom of Solomon 6. 24. Watch this. Read what you got. Verse the, 23, I'm sorry. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, and verse 23. Uh -huh. Neither will I go with consuming envy. Well, what? Consuming envy. Consuming envy. Envy will consume you. All your good works, your spirit, your knowledge, envy will eat all that up. You will slowly lose wisdom. You will slowly lose that spirit to do good works. And you will only be worried about putting your brother to death. That's what happened with Saul. His main focus wasn't punishing the enemies no more. It was trying to get rid of David. Yeah, I, I, I should have dived more into that, man. Saul went to extreme depths, levels, to try to get David out the way. You know what I'm saying? For real, he slew all the high priests. He used the, he told the Edomite. To kill the priest. You know what I'm saying? Because he couldn't find David. I'm telling you, man, envy is consuming. It'll eat your spirit up and turn you into the devil. Slowly but surely. Keep reading. For such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. You got that spirit of envy on you? Wisdom ain't going to dwell in you. You ain't going to have no fellowship in wisdom. Wisdom is Christ. You got that spirit of envy and jealousy on you, you ain't going to have no fellowship with Christ. For real. Sorry, I just... So y'all, hey, look. Don't, do not go with consuming envy, man. You know that spirit in you, you got to get rid of it. It was going to consume you. Philippians 2, verse 3. The book of Philippians, chapter 2, and verse 3. 
Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Or what? Or vainglory. Christ said, don't let nothing be done through strife of vain glory. You doing it just so you could be seen. You, you seen the reaction your brother got for doing something. You want that same sensation. Christ said, don't let nothing be done through that. Don't move like that. Don't operate like that. Read on. But in lowliness of mind. Of what? In lowliness of mind. In lowliness of mind, read. Let each esteem other better than themselves. You need to esteem others better than yourself. That's the competition. Who can exhort mo the most? <laughs> Who can build their brothers up the most? That's the competition. It ain't about who exalted more, who get more honor, who get more glory. That's vain. Christ said we don't move like that. In lowly, rather, in lowliness of mind, let us esteem others better than ourselves. Let your brother do the work. Exhort your brother to do the work. Keep reading. Verse 4. Look not every man on his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. Right. That's, you gotta, you want to provoke your brother to good works. Not provoking one another to sin so you can try to get some dirt on him so you can seem better than him. That ain't how we supposed to operate. You want your brother to be the best man you could be. That's the secret formula to becoming great. Your focus is making your brother great. In the process of you making your brother great, you being made great. Right. Wait, Jake don't understand it, though. For real. Keep reading. Verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Mm -hmm. But made himself of no reputation. He what? Made himself of no reputation. Christ didn't say, let me give me a name. <laughs> he didn't roll in his spirit. He wasn't about, that's why he said, forbid him not. It ain't all about me. It's about turning Israel back to the most high. That's my purpose. My purpose ain't, getting, ain't trying to get people to worship me. That's why you know Christmas is of the damn devil. Christ never intended nothing like that. He made himself of no reputation. Read. And took upon him the form of a servant. Of a what? A servant. That's why he kept telling the disciples, look, the greatest among you shall be the servant. That was him. He was living it. Read on. And was made in the likeness of men. Uh-huh. And being found in fashion as a man, mm -hmm. he humbled himself. He what? He humbled himself. He what? He humbled himself. Right. That's the first step to everything. That's the first step to repentance. That's the first step to glory. God said before honor is humility. You got to humble yourself to see that you battling with the spirit. Right. Because you in denial like hell if you think you don't. You got to humble yourself. To, to examine yourself. Christ humbled himself, read, and became obedient unto death. And became what? Obedient unto death. He took orders. Christ, whatever the Most High told him to do, he said, look, that will be done. That's how we got to be, obedient to death. Read. Even obedient unto death. Uh-huh. Even the death of the cross. Watch this. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him. So, for that reason, after going through all of that, humbling himself, making himself a no reputation, esteeming others better than himself, he ended up getting a name <laughs> highly exalted above all others. If you want that name, you want that glory, don't seek it. Don't seek it. <laughs> For real. That's the secret on how to get it. Don't seek it. Seek the Lord, and he going to give it to you. Is that in on that? Finish that. And giving him a name which is above every name. Right. So from there, go to Sirach 6. Sirach 632. It's going to be my last scripture. So if you know you battling that with a brother, you know what I'm saying, or a sister, 
You know what I'm saying? Look, instead of trying to compete with somebody and outdo somebody, you know what I'm saying? Here, get like them. Learn, learn how they doing what they doing and, and do it. Do the same thing. Read what you got. The book of Sirach, chapter 6, in verse 32. Mm -hmm. My son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. Mm -hmm. And if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. Mm -hmm. If thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. Mm -hmm. And if thou bow thine ear, thou shalt be wise. Read. Stand in the multitude of the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. So if a brother wise, he got the spirit on him, don't be envious. Don't try to compete and outdo the brother. Cleave unto him. He going to show you stuff. You going to learn stuff. You going to learn how to be great like he great. Cleave unto that person. Don't avoid that person. Don't always try to compete with that person. Read on. Be willing to hear every godly discourse, and let not the parables of understanding escape thee. Watch this. And if thou seest a man of understanding. A man or a sister of understanding. Read. Get thee betimes unto him. No, 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 no. Compete with him. Get thee betimes unto him. Avoid him. Get thee betimes unto him. Envy them. Get thee betimes unto him. Get close to them to find dirt on them to expose them. Get thee betimes unto him. God said, get thee betimes unto him. Read. And let thy foot wear the steps of his door. All right. So that's what you brothers and sisters got to do to fight this spirit of jealousy. You know what I'm saying? Here, aspire to be like their brother, their sister. Take their works as inspiration. Don't take it as a blow to your self-esteem. Don't think you can be. Don't think you can't be as great. We all got the same spirit. You just gotta believe in yourself. Believe in the Most High to bring it out. Everybody understand? Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.